Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today our topic is what brain parts influence hunger. These are a series of questions that have been asked by our audience. The brain parts that influence hunger is mostly the hypothalamus. There are other brain parts, but in generally the hypothalamus is the main area that has the satiety center. And the satiety center is satisfaction center is located just under your frontal lobes. And so it's a bilateral midline structure that's right, right back between your frontal lobes. So you've got these two big frontal lobes like this. And if you're open up like this, there's a space between them. And then at the bottom of them is where the hypothalamus would meet. Now the hypothalamus is not the thalamus. The thalamus are two golf ball size structures, maybe a little smaller than golf balls, in each hemisphere, right in the middle of the, of the cerebrum, right in the middle of each hemisphere. So that's the thalamus. And they're a bit further back and they're a, a relay station for sensory and motor signals. And uh, they're full of a lot of different relay, relay circuits. That's the thalamus. I'm talking about the hypothalamus, which is a little bit lower and in front of the thalamus and of the frontal lobe. The, another thing that's commonly confused for the hypothalamus is the hippocampus. It's not the hypocampus, it's the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is named after the shape of a horse or a swirly shape. And this, this is in the temporal lobes. This is in the sides in the temporal lobes and it angles down like this. It's rather like a motorcyclist's legs if their legs are, are spread wide outside a, a motorcycle. The temporal lobes hippocampus goes down like this and they're the memory centers of the brain. They're the, they're the areas that consolidate memory to help us uh, remember things from short-term to long-term memory. So while I've described what it isn't, let's now describe what it is. The hypothalamus is a structure that is pretty small and it's bilateral midline down between the frontal lobes and its job is to do all kinds of regulatory information. So it gathers information from your blood and it gathers information from your nerves and, and your brain and it sends out information that regulates the rest of your body. There, it's, a, it's quite complicated, but for this discussion today, we're talking about satiety. The blood-brain barrier in the hypothalamus is less strong than it is in the rest of the brain. There are maybe four areas in the brain where the blood-brain barrier is thinner or less powerful or less protected than the rest of the brain. So the hypothalamus is a vulnerable place. The hypothalamus senses the nutrients that are in our blood and the poisons and toxins that are in our blood to some degree, although it isn't the only area that does this. There are some of these functions are done a little bit lower in the brainstem in the pons and the medulla oblongata, but for our purposes, the satiety centers are in the hypothalamus and they are related mostly to fats and oils. So if you want to feel satisfied or full, the best way to do that is to get fats. So fats in your diet are very important and fats in your blood are very important. So we want to have high quality fats. I'm not against vegetarianism, but if you are a vegetarian, you got to be careful to make sure you get adequate fats, both saturated and unsaturated fats, omega-3 and omega-6 fats. So the fastest way to get satiety is to have fat in your diet. If you have enough fat in your diet and oil, you will have more satiety per meal. So that's why ketogenic diets add a whole lot of fat to meals that have a little bit of carbs. Because you don't have zero carbs on a keto diet, but you do have certainly reduced carbs. And as a person eats a meal that might have some carbs in it, they would be more satisfied and last longer if they have some oil in that meal. Now, we don't want to have a lot of processed seed oils. We don't want to have a lot of omega-6 oils. We tend in this country, the United States, to have way too much of that compared to omega-3s. And we also need to realize that there's a healthy amount that are required of saturated fats. There are vegetable sources of saturated fats and they're animal sources of saturated fats. And we're not talking about, you know, processed animal fats. We're talking about relatively pure, healthy, organic, uh, grass-fed types of animals that don't have the wrong oils in their, in their tissues. So the brain parts that influence hunger are the hypothalamus. And I'd like to end by saying the hypothalamus depends largely on both of the frontal lobes. This is not discussed very much, but you've got to have strong, healthy, both left and right frontal lobes to have a strong and healthy hypothalamus. And if a person doesn't have strong and healthy frontal lobes, the prefrontal cortex, the sensory motor cortex, premotor cortex, the frontal eye fields, these are parts of the brain that are very important to monitor and watch and pay attention to your symptoms and your brain waves 
to make sure that both sides are strong and robust and healthy and not over or under firing in, in certain ways at rest and under, acti uh, under activity, and that they can fire adequately downward to control and regulate the hypothalamus and make it healthy and strong so that it can regulate your hormones and regulate your thirst and your hunger and your satiety. Thank you.